On Larry King Now, Showrunner Week continues. We welcome famed Scrubs creator, Bill Lawrence. I think that you're very lucky in this time and age if you grow up actually wanting to do something with a passion. I always knew I wanted to at least try and write or tell jokes. My gift so far, Larry, is that my shows that really, really stink never get on TV, they're so bad. They don't even get past <laughs> the pilot stage. Plus, the team behind the smash show, New Girl. I got my first pilot script deal at 25. Oh, you always want to be a writer when you were a kid? What'd you want to be? I wanted to be, I don't know, I wanted Gertrude to be Stein. like, I did. <laughs> Wait, how'd you know? You told me. <laughs> Our first meeting that we had with uh, Liz and the network, Kevin Riley, the head of Fox, he sat everyone down at a table and he said, don't f this up. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Bill Lawrence, the famed sitcom creator and showrunner responsible for hits like Spin City and Scrubs and Cougar Townies. Back in the show running saddle once again with not one but two new sitcoms and a third show entering its sophomore season later this year. Surviving Jack was just premiered. It airs Thursdays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox, while Undateable is slated to premiere May 29th on NBC at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and Ground Floor will return to TBS in its second season Later this year, how do you balance all this? It sounds like things are going pretty well for me, man. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, uh, the way to balance it is to take credit for other people's hard work. You know, I mean, you know, that's the key to success in Hollywood. Is you uh, you rubber stamp other people's blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, and put your name. Now, you know, I'm very lucky to uh, to work with a lot of young men and women who are really talented, and you know, part of the fun for me is hopefully getting them through the system a little bit. One show I haven't seen yet, but the trailer looks terrific. Is Surviving Jack. Uh, Christopher Maloney is one of my favorite people. Oh, I he's love fantastic. What is Surviving Jack's premise? Surviving Jack's, the premise is uh, uh, the, the young creator, Justin Halpern, uh, wrote a best selling book called uh, I Suck at Girls uh, about the relationship between Justin's dad was uh, a military doctor who went on to be an oncologist and raised him with a you know, warm heart and a heavy hand. Uh, and it's about a period of time in Justin's life where his mom decided to go back to law school and become a social worker, and his dad having kind of been an absentee dad for most of his childhood, said, I'm going to take over. And uh, total nonfiction uh, piece, and uh, Chris is killing it. Doing well. It. What's that? It's going to do well. I think it's going to work, mm. you know? But you know what my thing is? I say it's going to work about every show. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then if it doesn't, people just call me on it. You've had shows lose out, too, right? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm, uh, it's <laughs> the TV business. I'm at least, it's like baseball, you know? You got it, bats 300. You know, as an all-star, it means seven out of ten times he, you know, I, I, it's, if 50 percent of my shows, you know, what my lucky, my gift so far, Larry, is that my shows that really, really stink never get on TV. They're so bad. They don't even get past <laughs> the pilot stage. So only my family and my friends and I know how horrible they are. And what's undateable about? Uh, undateable is just, uh, uh, I grew up on multi-camera sitcoms like Family Ties and Cheers and Seinfeld and, uh, uh, I loved them so much. People aren't really doing them anymore except CBS, and they aren't doing them with stand-up comics anymore the way they used to with Roseanne and, and uh, Home Improvement and, and Jerry's show. So Undateable is really just an excuse to put four stunningly talented young uh, stand-ups together in front of a live audience, you know, and it's a, it's a throwback show. It's throwback as they come. It's not crass or crude, but it's just a... What's its concept? A bunch four? of friends that hang out in a bar. The pitch four is... Four guys? It, it's uh, four guys, one girl hang out in a bar. You know, so the pitch of the show was uh, we all go through undateable periods in our life, and it's about uh, a group of friends that have not been able to get out of theirs. And mine I had, when Gary Goldberg hired me, I had white peroxide hair and uh, earrings, and uh, just looked like a guy from Connecticut. What can we expect from the new season of Ground Floor? You know what, Ground Floor is a show that uh, uh, I think it's working. I can't tell anymore, man. I can't even figure out TV right now. It's uh, so many channels. The, uh, uh, the best thing about Ground Floor for me is a work experience as the playing field between networks and cable outlets kind of levels, you know, and you can be doing a show, you know, here in your house, which is stunning, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, and, and do just as well as some network shows. I think that's what's been really exciting is to put a show on TBS with people I like working with and, and, and know that it, it can compete 
you know, on a playing field that kind of all bets are off right now. It looks oversaturated, but yet more keeps coming to the table. Yeah, you know what? Is it just means that you uh, can survive if you develop a niche audience. You know, if you if you have a fan base. By the way, the thing that stinks sorry, is you have to feed. Not stinks, but it's more of a burden to get them and keep them. You have to feed them extra content. You have to give them access to you as writers, to performers, and it becomes more of an all-inclusive job, you know, of uh, it's not just putting a show out every week. You know, it's uh, if you look at, like, what the kids on Community are doing, you know, that show has stayed alive, at least in part, because uh, the fan base is so vociferous that uh, I think they'd follow it to the, you know, even if he was just doing the show in his garage. Is there a formula? Anybody that says they know how TV works is full of crap, because if they did, there'd be hits every year, you know? I, I don't think there is. What is the pitch meeting like when you get before the network with the suits? It's, uh, uh <laughs> you know what? It's changed for me because when I was a younger guy, I used to go in and just tap dance and truly uh, treat it like stand up and try to make them laugh, you know? <laughs> and uh, uh, I think, you know, as they've all gotten more savvy as well about the reality of the TV landscape. Um, the most important thing I tell young writers now when they're pitching a show, it can't sound like a piece of business. It has to sound like something you're passionate about, you know, uh, and for personal reasons, creative reasons, because you're talking to somebody. Uh, it's probably like you with guests. I mean, you've interviewed so many interesting people. You know, if someone doesn't bring their A game and isn't really engaged, I know that you kind of click off yeah. in your head. And so you really have to bring passion to it. You get used to the pain of having a show canceled? Uh, I think that you, I, I always say I'm Teflon now because I think that uh, the amount of rejection that you face in the entertainment industry, uh, coupled with the uh, addition now of the amount of joy other people get from your rejection and failure on the internet, you know, uh, that you have yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> why do people enjoy it? Uh, I don't know. You know, I have some feelings about it. I think the anonymity helps, you know, it's the schadenfreude of it all, getting to, uh, you know, by the way, I'm not holier than thou. My wife and I enjoy a nice evening uh, privately in our house talking about people that we think are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I just think now there's a, a medium to that, that young people grow up thinking like, hey, I'd like to put those mean thoughts out into the world without a name attached. Why would you leave Cougar Town? Uh, I never really did. My wife still works on the show, so uh, 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 everybody joked, but, you know, m my family life at home is certainly on Sunday. There's a script on my pillow that my wife's checked a couple of things that she might want me to look at. She's uh, very talented. You like working together? I do. You know, I'm probably the only married guy on the face of the planet that occasionally gets his, to tell his wife what to wear and how to dress and, and what to say. <laughs> and she actually pays attention, you know. More with the very talented, very successful Bill Lawrence after the break. Don't go away. We're back with uh, Bill Lawrence. How'd you start as a writer? You started as a writer, right? I did, you know, I was a stand-up first when I was a really young guy. And uh, I, I came out here. Uh, I didn't know anybody west of the Mississippi. I was painting houses and stuff. And I got really lucky. Uh, one gentleman named Norman Barish, who wrote on the old Dick Van Dyke show, He's the only guy that had any connections to Hollywood I knew back in the East Coast. And he said, my old managers, my old agents, uh, I don't know if they're out there anymore. His name is George Shapiro and Howard West. And I was watching Seinfeld that night, and it said a Shapiro West production. And I started, I immediately mailed those guys back when people still mailed letters, you know, and uh, wrote a passionate note to George and Howard that said, if you read this script, I will never bother you again. And they read it, and they didn't like it, and they sent me a nice note. And uh, I sent them another letter. I'm like, look, uh, I meant what I said before, but if you read this new script, <laughs> I also promise to never bother you again. Those guys signed me, and I was on a sitcom staff literally a week later. Is it the writing or the cast? Uh, it is lightning striking. It has to be a convergence of three different things, cast, writing, and uh, the timing of the zeitgeist, you know, being that you, you know, Big Bang Theory. Cast writing plus a time where nerds suddenly just popped and were in vogue, and people are looking at those people going, I'm one of them, you know? Is there a musical version of Scrubs? They are. They're developing a, you know, the, you know, the way entertainment works. We did one musical episode of that show, and a lot of the music was written by the, the, the young guys that did Book of Mormon. And so they're very popular, so immediately uh, producers came to us and said, We'd love to expand and develop this as a musical. I hear there's a trailer for your former star, Zach Braff's Wish I Were Here. Yeah. You, what have you heard about that? I've seen it. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I helped him a little bit on it. It's a good movie. 
you know. Um, Zach's an interesting guy because I think he's so talented and uh, so polarizing in a, in a weird way because people are very passionate in their love for him or in their dislike of him, which I find, you know, <laughs> ridiculous. You know, he's uh, opening tonight, Larry, uh, in the, as the lead of Woody Allen's first Broadway play. Bullets over Broadway. Zach he's the star of that. He play, yeah, he plays. He's the, playing he plays the, the John Cusack, John Cusack character. Yeah. yeah, he's terrified. You know, he's scared. Yeah, it's a musical. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't heard a lot of Zach Braff albums. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you ever thought about getting in front of the camera yourself? Um, I'm doing it now. I have very blue eyes, Larry. I feel like I'd pop on camera. Uh, the, I, you know, I always had a pipe dream. So, uh, I was talking to you about it off camera of, of doing a talk show and uh, being a Letterman type, you know, and... Uh, uh, Try it. I was out here, by the way, I was out here when Conan first started and he gave hope to all comedy writers, you know, because he came from our ranks. Yeah, correct. Um, but I, I fear that those days have passed me by. What makes a good showrunner? Uh, a combination of being a control freak and somehow still empowering other people to do their jobs and feel like they're really contributing. You know, because if you veer to either side too hard, uh, it won't work. I have some social media questions. Sure. Lee628, which character of yours is most like yourself? You know what, uh, I really thought that I kind of merged myself and Mike Fox on Spin City, you know, because uh, uh, Mike, it was such an interesting experience for me because, you know, I, I worshipped the guy growing up in love and TV and to have somebody actually turn out to be even better than you hoped they would. But we were both kind of, you know, high energy idealist type guys and uh, uh, still to this day have the same sense of humor. So, I could, you know, he's one of those actors that I feel like I could step into a room and start writing for him again tomorrow because uh, I know his voice and he knows how I write. Five Jew three I zero with names on Instagram. <laughs> Five Jew three. What inspired you to start writing? Uh, a couple things, you know. I I, uh, I think that you're very lucky in this time and age if you grow up actually wanting to do something with a passion. You know, I think that you know those kids that are going to law school because they're not sure what they want to do, or business school because they're not sure what they want to do. Uh, I was lucky enough that I always knew I wanted to at least try and write or tell jokes. Uh, the thing that made me a writer is one of the times I really bombed doing stand-up. A friend of mine, the next night I couldn't go on because it was just too uh, soul-crushing. Uh, he did my act and, and did better than I did. And so I, uh, there was a plus and minus. I'm like, oh, I'm not a great performer. The plus side is I'm not a bad joke writer. So it kind of transitioned to me behind the camera. Are you always thinking of new projects? I keep a, a, a moleskin notebook even in my car around at all times and write little lines down that I think might be a TV show. Have you got something in the works? Yeah, you know what, I'm, um, I think what's been tough for me is I haven't written anything just completely on my own since Scrubs, you know, I think one of the, 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 the pure joy I get out of it, if you're lucky enough to grab a brass ring once, you could be foolish to try and recreate that experience. And so what's been fun is creating, whether it was Cougar Town or Ground Floor, or doing it with other people. Um, it's time for me to stop being a chicken and write my own thing again. And uh, I think I'm going to try and do something on cable. You know, I was really jealous watching Damon Lindelof. So he's got a great new show coming out on HBO, and he kind of is segueing from the, the network grind of 22 episodes into kind of a really personal project. I'm going to give it a shot. Thanks, Bill. You bet. Bill Lawrence, well, thanks to him very much for being with us. Check out Surviving Jack Thursdays at 9.30 Eastern on Fox. Stay tuned for the premiere of Undateable, May 29th, 9 p.m. Eastern on NBC, and Ground Floor returns to TBS later this year, and you can watch Bill play If You Only Knew on my blog, kingsthings.aura.tv. Next, the team behind New Girl, Liz Merriweather, Brett Baer, and Dave Finkel. Stay with us. Welcome to Larry King Now. Liz Merriweather, Brett Baer, and Dave Finkel are our special guests. They're the writers and executive producers of the hit Fox sitcom New Girl. Brett and Dave have a lengthy television pedigree that includes 30 Rock, Just Shoot Me, and the United States of Tara. And at 32, Liz is one of the youngest TV series creators and showrunners in Hollywood. New Girl, currently in its third season, airs on Fox Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern 
8 Central, how did this all happen? <laughs> that was amazing, it? by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm done. <laughs> I've done it a while. Who put, who put it together? Who put New Girl together? I wrote the pilot, and then um, the people at Fox, you know, saw me. I was 29, and they were like, you can't run a show by yourself. <laughs> and, um, so they liked, they liked the concept, but they, yeah. they said, get somebody else to help. Yeah, yeah, I needed, I needed some help. So, some hacks, uh, yeah. yeah. We'd worked together about uh, five, five, six, years, five ago. six years ago on another pilot that Liz had done. And, uh, a pilot that went nowhere. Went nowhere. Crazy. Yeah, it, it was, was nuts. Insane. As most pilots. Yeah, yeah exactly. so this one, I still contend, is a, one day will be a great, yeah. a great show. Uh, Make a good animated show. Yeah. It made no sense for real people. <laughs> you all like New Girl right away? I'm a she Oh, yeah. yeah. She yeah. Like well, it? she right. sent us a little email uh, about a month before we got involved with it that uh, just said, uh, it had the script attached. It said, do you like my poop? And <laughs> we read it, <laughs> and we liked your poop. So. Did I say was, that? Yeah, did. <laughs> that was what the email said. No cash, no it. punctuation. So, so, so I was not ready to run a television show. Give us the concept. It's a pretty basic concept, which is a, a girl has a rough breakup. She moves in with three guys, and uh, they Isn't kind that of like a show of forty years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is the magic of our show. Yeah. I mean, actually, the truth is, like, I think we use a lot of sort of sitcom premises that have been around for a while, and then always try to subvert them or tweak them or turn them on their head. I mean, I think with comedy, you want to keep it simple. I think really high concept. Concept comedy doesn't last. I Did think you, you just move wanted... in with two guys in your life that this idea. Yes, from. us. <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah, we, we live together at this point. I had a, I had a, a friends in uh, in New York who had this loft in Williamsburg where I spent a lot of. I didn't live there, but I spent a lot of hungover mornings waking up there. <laughs> what do you like about running a show? You've never run a show before, right? I'd never. Yeah, I'd never worked in. I'd never worked on a show. I. I like I like that it's always something different. It's always there's always a different problem, a different solution. I mean, you you think you finish one thing, something else pops up. What are your duties? Uh, protecting Liz from herself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I I think our job uh, since the beginning has always been to sort of protect her vision and try and help get this show. When we read the script, it was like it was very clear exactly what the voice of the show was, and our job is to do 150, 160 of these episodes and make it happen, pull the staff together and get everybody moving on. You two have been together a lot. A long time. time. Yeah, very long time. We've been working together, I think, 15 years professionally, maybe five years So you both write? Yeah, yeah we, we write, write everything together. together. But we always have. We even speak together. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and actually, when they came in for the first meeting, they were wearing really similar shirts. Identical shirts. So yeah. they like actually the looked Italian like they were. Italian tablecloths. <laughs> they attached at the hip. Of the... Yeah, kind of. What's the hardest <laughs> part about keeping a successful show successful? Oh boy, I think keeping uh, it successful. Yeah, I mean it's a marathon. <laughs> so and I, it's really hard. I mean, I think what's what's been uh, amazing for us, and I think is really interesting, is that television seems to be moving faster than it used to in the old days. So the changes and the evolutions of the series itself occur much quicker than they used to be. You're pretty, you're pretty young at this game. Where did you, what age did you start? Uh, I started writing right after college. I got my first pilot uh, script deal at 25, I think. Wow. So, yeah. And had a pilot made, which is extraordinary. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I mean, nobody has that happen. <laughs> yeah. Did you you uh, you always want to be a writer when you were what you want to be? I wanted to be I don't know I wanted Gertrude to be like Stein. I did. <laughs> Wait, how did you? Know? Someone told me right Gertrude. Stein. <laughs> 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 Get the paper right in front of them. Someone said hey, you wanted to be Gertrude Stein. <laughs> yeah, you said. I that. thought you were like you were like in my mind well, or something I, I for a second. Well, <laughs> well, all right. Did you want to be Alice B. Tokles? <laughs> no, 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 not the girlfriend. No, <laughs> I wanted to be yeah I wanted to kind of be an experimental playwright and and do I I was. In uh, New York, doing theater. I did a, a play with that was half robots. It was like I was doing some. You're really kind of weird, in other words. I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I'm a oh, big weirdo. Oh, she's a weirdo. She's yeah, really weird. Weird. She's crazy. Yeah. Super but weird. But and then I and then I you know I found a, I loved writing jokes and it, that's not as uh, you know uh, people don't love experimental theater that's just filled with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you have said is this right that. New Girl is the first post post 9 11 show. What I, does that mean? I, I regretted saying that it was at <laughs> a Writers mean? Guild thing and they plied me full of wine. And I thought, I, 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 here's what I meant. I, I'm, you said that. I'm excited to have the opportunity to set the record straight because I got some flack about Please, it online. Set it straight. Yeah. Uh, basically, what I meant was that a lot of the comedy that came out, I think, after uh, in the 2000s uh, was a little cynical. And when I first saw New Girl, the pilot, put together, not even the script that she sent, but when we did the show, and Jake Kazan and Zoe were a part of the process, uh, all of a sudden the show really ha had this heart that I hadn't seen on television comedy. It was like 
wearing his heart on its sleeve. And I was taken aback and a little surprised by that. And I was like, wow, this is different. I mean, is this going to work in this marketplace? Because it seemed different than a lot of the comedy that and, and stuff that Dave and I had been working on prior to that. Does so. any of your lives come up in the show? Oh, oh all the time. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's. We have a staff the right. of yeah. writers, 15 people, and everybody's personal stories are a uh, little little uh, to the dangerous side <laughs> on television But now we work so much that we don't have any lives anymore. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. we're out of personal life to yeah. share. So, so the new girl to have a hit, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. just yeah. fun. Yeah, f yeah. I, the characters on our show are all going to become TV writers. In yeah. the next <laughs> up next, Liz, Brett, and Dave take on the decision to break up their golden couple. And what comes next? <laughs> With the writers, uh, they do everything. With the hit show New Girl on Fox, you recently broke up Jess and Nick. Who made that decision? Uh, we all did. Yeah. I mean, I think we it was time to do it. And, um, uh, you know, like, like Brett said, I think television is moving faster these days. People want kind of more plot and we but just... don't they get mad too, fans? Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think we just kind of try to keep everyone on their toes. I, th I think we knew, like, going into the relationship that those two were not perfectly ready for, for a complete relationship. So we knew that it was going to be rocky. We weren't sure what that meant necessarily, but it probably was not going to be a thing that was going to last the whole series of the show. It could come back. It might, you know, we, we're not... We, we like to play it fast and loose with that kind of stuff and let it be organic and speak to us. The two biggest moves on the show that we made, getting them together and breaking them up, were not decisions that we made even all the way up to the table draft of those episodes. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know we were going to do them, but when we got to the table episode of the one where they got together, it was like, this has to happen now, and it wasn't written originally, but... How far know. ahead are you? <laughs> Minutes, sometimes. Yeah. What is written? What is done? Uh, you know, we go into the season probably with about eight or nine scripts ready to go, and then by the end of the season, after doing 24 or 25 of these things, we're scrambling the week before to get something together. And Do you have a general idea where it's going? Uh, in, in the next season? Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean... I think this season we tried to make a really serialized show, which is different for a sitcom. We actually tried to tell an emotional arc of this relationship. There was poignant moments then, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And next season I think we're kind of going to focus on sort of just having fun and comedy and sort of maybe get, get back to, like, the group hanging out. How'd you cast it? Uh, Amazing process. We saw yeah. probably every actor in... In Los Angeles, uh, we saw so many people. Um, Our director and producer, Jay Kasdan, said to us on day one, he said, you're going to hate me for telling you this, but you've got to see everyone in town for every part. He said, Jay's he had said, a very he said successful your, run. Very yeah, successful. He's, right. he's, he's done okay. <laughs> he said that your face is going to hurt because you're going to be smiling, so like fake smiling through all these auditions all day long. And <laughs> uh, we would just get to the end of the well, day. Does he and rule like, the thing? Who, you're the ruler, aren't you? I'm, She's the ruler. Yeah, that, I mean, the, you know. She, she it's does, important that everybody that, says that. Right. <laughs> are female showrunners still rare? They are, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. It's weird, though, because yeah. Dave and myself, actually, the last three shows we've done Weird have all ladies. had female showrunners. Oh. Uh, but we had Liz, Diablo Cody, Tina Fey. I mean, I, for us, it's like, I don't, it doesn't seem rare to me. D does the show feel improvised? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely and have the script. How do you accomplish that? Well, we have the script locked, you know, our, our version of the script locked down. We take it down to the floor. And those guys just, I mean, they're all such good improvisers that we really s sort of, like, give it over to them. And there's a good give and take between us where we sort of, if we see them going down a road that seems interesting, we will allow them to. We'll say, open that up. Just explore that. And they're great, and they do. And We, we use it all. Yeah. So we've got to blend it. When the show gets edited together, it's a lot of. Composition. That was always really important to us was to have it feel real, to have it feel like real people talking, and to not have it feel so scripted with jokes. And, Set up. Punch. I mean, which yeah. is you know people have different tastes, but that's what we. Was New Girl we, always the title? No. no. <laughs> you want to tell uh, the title? Yeah, it was a, it was chick with chicks, I think. <laughs> no, no, chicks and chicks and chicks. Chicks with <laughs> a whole other thing. Chicks and dicks chicks get and approved. Dicks. No, 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 I mean, obviously Network TV no. doesn't want a, a show with <laughs> in the title. Chicks so. with <laughs> is a different... That was a different show, was a show, a show that pilot. we should work on. That's my next a, show. But you're all creative. Mm -hmm. So is there a point when you're doing New Girl, you also think of other things you want to do? Um, oh. yeah. When we have that like run moment. away? <laughs> <laughs> if you're creative, then things got to be spinning all always. the time. Always. I mean, there's always, yeah. you know, I used, to, I used to keep a little book of, like, just sort of, like, random ideas that because of the hours on this show that we, I don't, we don't get to do it as much, but definitely, like, there's always ideas out there we, we'd like to pursue. I think we'd all like to work on a show that doesn't have 22, 23 episodes a year. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Falk, the late Peter Falk, the wonderful sure, Columbo, one of the great characters. One of the great characters in history of television. 
told me that the problem he had with television as opposed to movies, television, he thought it was not get it right, it was more get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit of the situation. You have I to think finish at a certain time. Movie, Which you can, can go be good and bad. I mean, the good thing is that you can't edit yourself. You can't, you don't have a filter, and that's fun. I mean, you don't sit there kind of trying to make everything perfect, and I love that. But then the bad side is that when you want to make something perfect, you can't. You just, it gets taken out of you. If you don't look at that as an obstacle and say to yourself, that's part yeah. of the creative process, that's part of what we do and what we're getting paid to do and, and hopefully entertain people, it, you can make it work for you. How do you deal with Fox? Are they good to deal with? <laughs> yeah. 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 I have they a really... little smirk. <laughs> Oh, no. well, but obviously, at all networks, there have to be. Yeah, suits. I mean, look, there's, there has there's to a, be suits. There's a, there's a line where business and art, you know, cross cross paths, and that's and they don't get the, the joke. Yeah, they get. I mean, they get the joke, and they've been great partners through through this. They've through been very supportive, episodes. actually. In yeah. fact, in the beginning, uh, our first meeting that we had with uh, Liz and the network, Kevin Riley, the head of Fox, he sat everyone down at a table and he said, "Don't f this up. This is right." <laughs> That's my language on his. Uh, but he, yeah, that's pretty much what he said. Yeah, he might have. He, uh, but I the know point Kevin, was, that's I, what he said. Yeah, <laughs> I like what's here. Let's not f this up. It's good. Let's not make a mess of this. And uh, you know, I think that's what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, and I think, I think all networks right now are reeling a little bit. I mean, it's a it's a weird time. So I mean, now, are the are you partners now going on, or will you or will you each do individual things beyond New Girl? I, I honestly, I'm just. I can't I, see through to yeah. next week or yeah. going forward <laughs> past New Girl. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that I showered this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we, and so are we. You have to take stock of the little things at this point. Are you married? I am married. I have three kids. Yeah. You have yeah. a home life with all this? I do. I have a home anymore. life. Yeah. But I, when, it, it's, when I get home to see my kids, is a glorious uh, glorious moment. You have a home life? I do. I did. Uh, I have a wife and I have three kids. Uh, two of them are older and out of the house. One of them just went to college. So. Really? Yeah. You look pretty young. I'm young. And Liz, are you with someone? Uh, I'm. I, I'm not married. No, I'm. I'm uh, alone. Alone. <laughs> a lot of. A lot of. A lot of SVU. Are you I, really, I really like Law and Order SVU. What, you would be tough, I think, for a guy to handle, right? You're, you're, you're all over the board. You're doing robot shows. You're doing this. <laughs> That, I, yeah, yeah, I could give you some people to call that could probably probably agree with you on that. I could see a guy meets you and he calls up a friend and says, I met this girl, she's really pretty and very talented, but... <laughs> I think you. that's probably, that's probably right. So Thanks something. to my guests, Liz Merriweather, Brett Bear, and Dave Finkel. And you can check out their answers to your social media questions on our blog at kingsthings.aura.tv. New Girl airs Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central on Fox. You can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>